Now, if you're a Sacramento Kings fan, or you just knew what was going on in the 2010s, you know how bad we all felt for DeMarcus Cousins. It's a damn shame we never saw Prime Boogie in the playoffs ever. He never was in the playoffs on the Pelicans or the Kings. He was drafted in 2010 and didn't play his first playoff minute till 2019 with the Golden State Warriors. What is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? The objective of today's video is to pretty much get DeMarcus Cousins a ring in Sacramento. They missed on so many draft picks after they drafted him in 2010. In 2011, they ended up with Jimmer Ferdette. 2012, Thomas Robinson, when the pick after him was Damian Lillard. 2013, they took Ben McElmore, seventh overall. In 2014, they took Nick Stauskas, eighth overall. In 2015, which is the year of this roster, they took Willie Cauley-Stein, sixth overall. They botched the 2016 draft. They didn't really make a good selection until 2017 when they took Fox, fifth overall. So this is one of the worst drafting teams of the 2010s they're up there with the charlotte hornets and the phoenix suns but you know we actually don't have a terrible roster right now even though they did go 29 and 53 with this roster funny enough we do have mike malone as the head coach he's the reigning nba champion of the denver nuggets right now this was the year before they ended up getting george carl i'd like to find a good point guard for cousins long term like darren collison's a solid guard but he's more of a backup in my opinion than a starter rudy gay is an expiring contract at the end of the year not much of a three-point shooter what we may do is trade him at the deadline because we could probably get a very good return for him omri caspi we have jason thompson we got reggie evans carl landry ramon sessions there's a young ben macklemore we got ryan hollins as well yeah i don't expect this team to do too well in the 2015 season like i said we're probably going to be pretty active at the deadline in terms of maybe being a seller we started off the season with a three and three record Rudy Gay has actually been our number one scorer, followed by DeMarcus Cousins, who's averaging a double-double right now. Oh so yeah, Rudy Gay, $17.5 million in expiring contract at the end of the year. DeMarcus Cousins is under contract till his age 28 season. We do have Carl Landry, Jason Thompson, Darren Collison, Ben McElmore under contract, Ramon Sessions as well. A couple other expiring deals like Reggie Evans, we could definitely look to move at the deadline. Yeah, we're 13 and 19 right now. We've had a couple injuries this year, but nothing too crazy. I think we're going to be trending more towards being a seller at the deadline. Like I said in the beginning, of the video we went 23 and 59 in real life during this year LeBron James is number one for MVP rookie of the year would be Jabari Parker David Lee there in sixth man of the year race he's number one AD on the Hornets depoy then there's Damian Lillard key clutch player but hey we got Thomas Robinson this is pretty much leading into the 2015 draft in which Cat went number one D'Lo two Julio Okafor three Kristaps Porzingis four and Mario Hizonia five it's not a great draft class, but you did have good players like Devin Booker and Miles Turner go outside the top 10. I don't think there's anybody right now that I want to get a contract extension done with. Like Rudy Gay, you know what? For seven and a half million dollars, like it's it's basically going down ten million dollars. You know what? Let's extend him. Let's give him a three-year deal, seven million a year. Um, I'll give him a player option on the last year to get that deal done. Um, we'll actually, yeah, we'll do seven and a half million dollars. So boom, Rudy Gay's coming back. That means I'm not gonna move him at the deadline. I mean, Rudy Gay is definitely one of the uh, better, I guess, wing scorers in the league. He is averaging twenty and a half points this year, with Demarcus Cousins averaging twenty and twelve. It's not like the best score in the league because there's two players both in OK. Well, I guess Katie's in OKC Hardens in Houston averaging north of 30. But you know what? I will take that. All right. So we're here at the deadline. We are 19 and 30. So I don't think DeMarcus Cousins is making his first playoff appearance yet. We've played five less games than the New Orleans Hornets right now. That's kind of weird. Yeah, just kind of looking at the uh, All-Stars, this is 2015, not 2011. You got D-Rose, Dwayne Wade, LeBron, Paul George in Indiana, Paul Millsap, Lowry and DeRozan both in Toronto, Kevin Love in Cleveland, Al Horford in Atlanta, Melo, Bosch, and Kyrie. In the West, you got Russ, Harden, AD, Duncan, Griffin, CP3, Steph, Marcus All. Hey, we got DeMarcus Cousins, but you got Dwight, Dame, and shout out to Zach Randolph making it. Yeah, I'm also in a new setup right now, so it's a work in progress. You guys can let me know if the quality looks any different. There's a slight zoom in on my camera. So just let me know in the comments if you don't notice a difference at all, or if you do, I'd love to hear that. Um, hopefully, the setup will be done sooner than later. Darren Collison is averaging 7.3 assists. He's somebody I could look to move in the offseason if I wanted to. He's a good free throw and three-point shooter. I mean, he's 27 years old, but like I said, I, I would not mind him as like a backup. All right, I'm going to make this trade with the Houston Rockets. I'm sending them Carl Landry and Reggie Evans in exchange for Kosas Papanikola and Dante Cunningham. It's funny because Carl Landry, like the Kings traded him to the Trust the Process Sixers for a salary dump, which was the dumbest 
longest trade ever. The Sixers then leveraged that Kings pick with number three to get number one to take Markel Fultz. Obviously, in hindsight, that didn't work out. They should have stayed at three, maybe have gone Jason Tatum. Uh, but that Kings pick ended up being pick 14 in the 2019 draft with Romeo Langford being selected. So it's funny that that pick didn't end up being like the greatest thing ever because I'm pretty sure in 2018 it was protected. And obviously, the Kings picked two there and they selected Marvin Bagley. Ben McElmore this season is averaging 13.3 points, shooting 42% from the field, 34 from three, 75 from the line. You know, not a terrible rookie year. Omri Caspi might have some value at the deadline, an expiring deal, but shooting 37 from three. All right, before I move Caspi, I'm going to move Ryan Hollins and a second rounder this year in exchange for a first rounder, probably going to be super late because the Bulls are good with Derrick Rose, but a first rounder in two years from now, which would be in the 2017 draft, and that's an auto-generated player, but I will take that. All right, and I'm going to do this trade with the Portland Trailblazers. We're going to move them, Dante Cunningham and Omri Caspi. We're going to get a first rounder next year and CJ McCollum, who is yet to like break out a very young CJ McCollum in this deal who is averaging nine points this year 43 from the field 42 from three though and he's under team control for the next few years so we're gonna have Darren Collison Ben Macklemore Rudy Gay Jason Thompson and Demarcus Cousins we'll have Kosas Papanikola we got uh CJ McCollum off the bench we will have to have some auto-generated players while remote sessions is out but I promise you there'll be no Stephen Browns on the team next year so LeBron wins MVP this year Jabari Parker rookie of the year on the Milwaukee Bucks shout out to David Lee Nick's legend he ends up winning sixth man of the year AD deep David Blatt, Coach of the Year on the Cavs. You have Harden, Curry, LeBron, AD, and Cousins on All-NBA First Team. Boom, we have the All-NBA First Team Center. Let's actually do something with it and not completely draft bust after bust. Three of these guys have MVPs with Harden, Curry, and LeBron. You have Dame, Derrick Rose, who broke his right foot. He's out for the year. Go figure. KD, Paul George, and Marcus Saul on All-NBA Second Team. I would love to have Paul George on this team. Paul George and Demarcus Cousins from the same draft class. The more you know, Russ, CP3, Millsap, Griffin, Horford, all All-Stars, all on All-NBA Third Team. Shout out to Giannis, which would be, what, year number two for him on all defensive first team. Um, do we get any other Kings? Yes, Demarcus Cousins. All defensive second team. He's putting in that work. We have all rookie first team member Kosas Papunikola. Didn't really do too much. And obviously, we didn't make the playoffs. We finished the season in the Western Conference with a 28 and 54 record. We are. I guess projected to slot in as the fourth overall pick because all of the Nets, Sixers, and Pistons were worse than us. Now, just kind of looking here at the player stats, like obviously DeMarcus Cousins, we're building around him. He's not going anywhere. Rudy Gay, though, if like there's a good trade, I will think about it. He's 28 years old. He might have really good trade value. I mean, we'll explore that, but I'm not really in a rush to move him. Darren Collison, same thing. Like I said multiple times in this video, I'd rather him be a backup point guard, a really good backup than a starter, but I'm fine with him starting next year if that's what were to happen. Ben McElmore, I don't think he's going to be good enough to be like a starter for us, but if he's like the seventh man on the team, I'll take that. Jason Thompson actually gave us pretty good numbers here. Probably going to slide in as the backup power forward next year. Ramon Sessions was fine when he played. There's a young CJ McCollum who's going to be in the rotation next year. We also got Davis Bertans as well, who we actually picked up in free agency, which is pretty cool. And then there's Kosas Papinukova. So, you know, I'm very excited about the future of this team. We'll see what happens. So in round two, you have the Celtics and Cavs. You have the Charlotte Bobcats and the Miami Heat. You have the Clippers and you have the Spurs. And then you have the Thunder versus the Rockets. You have Harden versus his old team. And let's see what would happen here in the finals. Cavs thunder a rematch of 2012's finals and the Cavs sweep them. LeBron is your finals MVP. Yeah, I guess we never saw like Harden on the Rockets against like KD and Russ on the Thunder in the playoffs. So you have a lot of notable retirees. You got Ray Allen, Tim Duncan, Vince Carter, Paul Pierce, Chauncey Billups. There goes George Carl. Never ended up being the Kings head coach. Tim Duncan is the one that head to the Hall of Fame. Should have been a couple more guys than that. He gets his jersey retired by the Spurs. Paul Pierce by the Celtics. All right, draft lottery time. 2K, please give me some luck. We're projected there at number four. Why don't you shoot me up into number one? I would love to draft maybe Kristaps Porzingis at the power forward spot, Devin Booker as the shooting guard. I'll even take D'Lo if it comes down to it. Oh, all right, so we actually drop a spot. We drop from four to five. So <laughs> the NBA does not want to give me some luck. The Magic end up getting the number one overall pick. Nets at two, Sixers at three, Pistons at four. I'm not sure if I'm going to make a trade and like move the fifth overall pick, but I think for now, we're going to stay there. Oh, we got Tyron Corbin, remember him as an assistant. All right, with the number one pick, the Orlando Magic pair up 
Wow. Chris stops Porzingis and Dwight Howard together. That is going... Well, no. Dwight Howard's in Houston. Never mind. So I guess it'd be Chris stops Porzingis and Nikola Vucevic. That is pretty sick. I was trying to do that with him and DeMarcus Cousins here in Sacramento. The Nets are on the clock with the number two pick, and they select Carl Anthony Towns. So two of the top big men are off the board. Don't tell me Booker and D'Lo are the next two picks. Well, there goes Devin Booker to Philadelphia. And is Detroit going to ruin it? No, they take Josh Richardson interesting selection a little bit of a reach so i'm gonna end up with deandro russell with this pick i think that's a no-brainer you know what he does have the ceiling to start way over darren collison and then i could have darren collison as my backup you know what? i don't hate that idea the hornets are trading the sixth overall pick for andre drummond that is an insane pickup the dude is going to be a beast De uh, detroit ends up taking josh richardson but they get miles turner i guess to replace drummond there and then frank the tank ends up as a laker Miles as a wolf justice winslow to the bucks and then juan toscano to the grizzlies so let's sign d'angelo russell team player options picking it up on macklemore i'm actually gonna pick it up on everybody but probably look to move ramon sessions i don't think i'm gonna land a dirk or a Dwayne wade in free agency not like i really want them because they're a little bit older but kevin love would be a phenomenal fit, but we are about seven and a half million dollars over the cap, which means if I wanted love, I'd have to move Gay or Thompson and others. And I'm gonna try it. We are gonna send Jason Thompson, who's an expiring contract, had a good season last year as a power forward, and Ramon Sessions to Memphis for two future protected first rounders. Kevin Love has zero D uh, zero offers right now. I'm gonna give him $17 million over the course of four years. He's coming off a 17 point, 12 and a half rebound season. Is this risky? Maybe. But you know what? I'll also offer Kawhi a deal. Rondo ended up being a king at one point, but I don't think I'm going to offer him a contract. So like Marcus Aldridge, he's 30. I don't know. Let's see if we get love. All right. We do not get Kawhi Leonard. Let's sign Kevin Love to a four-year deal. Kawhi goes back to San Antonio. So now we have a really good front court. We have Kevin Love and we have DeMarcus Cousins. We have a good point guard rotation with Collison and Russell. Shooting guards, a little bit inconsistent. Small forwards, fine. You know, we actually have a good starting five. Let's just wrap out this bench. Ooh, I would like this pickup. Let's see if we can get J.R. Smith on a three-year contract. Boom, there we go. I feel like J.R. Smith was definitely a king at one point. All right, I, I second-guessed myself. I checked. No, he was not a king, so I was definitely wrong there. Let's try to get some more big man depth. Uh, Omar Ashik on a three-year deal would actually be pretty sweet. Team option on the last year. Please don't take another offer. I really need you. Boom, there we go. We get Omar Ashik. And then we can get an older Josh Smith as well. Why not? Let's give him a one-year deal. Boom. All right, so I like our depth right now. We have uh, plenty of good options. I think this can be a playoff team in the Western Conference. Let's get Ishmit to be the third string point guard. Let's get Chris Kamen to be the third string center. And let's just also sign Reggie Williams for depth. So we get Ishmith. We get Reggie Williams. We don't get Chris Kamen. So let's settle for... Dwayne Dedman. Yeah, he's 25 years old. Why not? All right, player progression here. DeMarcus Cousins is up and overall. I'm very excited to watch this uh, front court unfold next year. I think it sh should be really good. I think we can make the playoffs and finally get DeMarcus Cousins playing basketball in mid to late April. All right, so this is what the starting five is going to look like in year number two. We got D'Lo, J.R. Smith, Rudy Gay, Kevin Love, DeMarcus Cousins. Not the greatest defensive starting five. I mean, Cousins was on all defensive first team last year, but that is definitely going to be one of our weaknesses this year. We're not a good defensive team. We have Collison, Macklemore, Ashik, Josh Smith, and Kostas Papinukova off the bench, but I think I'm actually going to give those minutes to CJ McCollum just to try to develop him a little bit off the bench to see if he can end up being a good rotational piece for us. We're three star pace in space right now. If we do end up going to defense, it's only two stars. So I'm not going to do that for Mike Malone. If we have a bad year, he's probably going to get fired. We lose by 10 to start off the year great. All right, so we are 14 and 8 through our first 22 games. You'll love to see that. We have a plethora of players averaging north of 10 points per game. Darren Collison's giving me 11 and 5 with good efficiency off the bench. J.R. Smith is shooting 48% from three and is making $3 million a year. Rudy Gay's taking a step back a little bit. Not really sure about that three-point percentage jump. I assume he hasn't taken many this year. He has taken 28, though. That's kind of shocking. There's Devo, 15 points, 6.7 assists. Kevin Love at 16 and 13, shooting 48% from three. And DeMarcus Cousins doing DeMarcus Cousins things. I feel like we are one of the better three-point shooting teams in the league as well. All right, so here at the trade deadline, we are 32 and 20, which is currently the four seed in the Western Conference. We're 11 and a half games back 
of the Thunder, who are the one seed. Obviously, that's a very good team with Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, Serge Ibaka, Steven Adams, a younger Reggie Jackson as well. Just kind of looking at the overall stats this year, we're getting great play out of our front court. Loving Cousins. It ended up being Cousins and Davis down the line. Rudy Gay has been like a really good third scoring option. d was having a solid rookie year. He's inefficient, but that's just the norm for rookie guards. Even Ben McElmore has done a little bit better this year. At least he's turning himself into a consistent three-point shooter. We don't really have any contract extension to hand out right now. Do we have anybody in the award races? Nobody in MVP. We do have d number three in Rookie of the Year. Thank you, Detroit, for taking Josh Richardson over him. Uh, we have nobody in six man, nobody in deep boy. There's Draymond in Atlanta, and then nobody in most improved. You got DeAndre Jordan, though, fifth in clutch player of the year. Okay. I don't think I'm going to make any trades at the deadline. I think we can roll into the playoffs with this team. Dwayne Dedman is like the only notable free agent at the end of the year. I guess Kostas is as well. We've also been lucky this year with injuries, which has helped. So I'm going to do this trade. We're going to move Dwayne Dedman and Kostas stats in exchange for Zaza Pachulia, who will probably just walk in the end of the year. But we get Kent Bazemore, who will be under contract throughout the offseason if we want to leverage him in a trade as well. Well, speaking of injuries there, Ben McElmore breaks his left leg. He's out 8 to 10 weeks. That is brutal. Damn, we just were in a shootout with the Charlotte Bobcats. Kemba had 35. Al Jefferson had 24. Devo had 15 assists. He's up to 7.1 on his rookie season. And we finish the season with a 47 and 35 record. Steph Curry wins the 2016 MVP. I mean, this could have been a unanimous one. He was 50, 40, 90, and averaged 31, and 6, and 8. He was unanimous in 2016 in real life as well. Carl Anthony Towns, who was the second overall pick, was your rookie of the year. Nikola Vucevic, sixth man of the year. Maybe behind Miles Turner, you have Draymond Green winning deep boy in Atlanta. Quincy AC most improved. Phil Jackson, coach of the year in Golden State. Well, that's a sick pickup for them that he's the head coach there, I guess, instead of Steve Kerr. We do get DeMarcus Cousins on all NBA first team, average 16.6 points, 11.7 rebounds, 4.1 assists, and shot 51% from the field. We don't get anybody on second team or third team, so no Kevin Love being mentioned, um, and nobody on an all-defensive team as well. We do get D'Lo on all-rookie first team. So we are going to be taking on the Golden State Warriors in round one. Oh my God, Steph Curry's hurt. Clay just had also an MVP season. They don't have Draymond. Obviously, he's in Atlanta. Iggy wasn't great. They have Michael Kidd Gilchrist off the bench and Harrison Barnes. But Steph is hurt. How long is he going to be out for day to day? All right, he might miss like the first game or two. Here are the stats from the season with Kevin Love being the leading scorer, followed by Cousins, Gay, Russell, Carlson, and J.R. Smith. Rebounds, you had Love and Cousins average a double-double every night, which is pretty sick. And then we had four guys over a steal a night. So for the playoffs, I may go to a nine-man rotation. CJ McCollum was actually pretty solid in his role, but we do have like an excess of guards. So I think uh, Josh Smith's going to be the last guy in the rotation. We're probably going to give a couple less minutes to Ben McElmore. I would like to go 38 to Cousins and Love. And then Demo was so good throughout the year. Let's play him 35 minutes a night as well. All right, let's do this, man. Can we pull off the upset? Game one, we ended up losing this one by 41 points. No Steph, no problem for them. Game number two, yeah. All right, Steph is back. All right, we're going to get swept. Game number three. Oh, Kevin Love breaks his arm, man. What's with him getting injured against the Warriors in the playoffs? He's out six to eight weeks. We're done. We lost game three by 12 points. Steve had 27. CJ McCollum, 15 points in 15 minutes. Clay and Curry combined for 56. And we end up getting swept. Damn, not one single win. DeMarcus Cousins finally makes it to the playoffs, but is going to leave the 2016 season with still zero career playoff wins. And the Raptors win the finals with Kyle Lowry being your finals MVP. They beat the Thunder in seven games. DeRozan, oh my God, they had the cap to sign with Marcus Aldridge, Terrence Ross, Lowry, Lou Will, Valanchunas, or should I say Travis Kelsey, and they get it done. Wow, it's a good team to beat too. So they win a ring, which is cool. So they went in 2016, three years earlier to when they ended up winning it in 2019. KG, Steve Nash should be going to the Hall of Fame. And that is the case. Nash gets his jersey retired by the Suns, KG by the Timberwolves. So we actually are going to get a lottery pick here from Portland, it looks like. It's going to be at pick 14 from like the Omri Caspi deal. And then we also have picks 21 in this draft and 22. So we have three first round picks riding our first playoff series appearance in forever. But do I feel like Mike Malone is the guy that can get us over the hump? There's some very good coaches here on the market. How funny would it be if like Steve Kerr ended up signing with like the Kings rather than the Warriors? I wouldn't mind offering Mike D'Antoni a deal, Rick Carlisle a deal. So yeah, we're going to offer those guys deals. We get all of them. Do I want Carlisle? Do I want D'Antoni? Do I want Kerr? I'll take Rick. Why not? So our head coach now has championship experience because he won it with the Mavericks back in 2011. All right, so I'm going to draft all three rookies here, but none of them are going to be safe. 
all of them could be included in the trade. The Mavericks with the number one pick in the 2016 draft select Ben Simmons. Number two, the LA Lakers select Brandon Ingram. Jamal Murray goes three to the New York Knicks. Jalen Brown four to Detroit. And that's the Chris Dunn at five. So with the 14th pick, we are going to select Jakob Pertl out of Utah. Sabonis so ended up going eight. Uh, Brogdon healed went as well. There's Siakam, DeJounte Murray, Derek Jones Jr., Torian Prince, and then there we were. I'm also going to get Alex Caruso here at pick 21. And then the following pick, I'm going to select Dorian Finney-Smith, some good defenders. All right, so let's pick up the team option on Ben McElmore. Whenever I look for a trade, though, I'm only getting offered power forwards that really can't play the three or point guards. So there is a chance... I think about moving D'Lo to the two. I mean, what are the odds I could pull off a Paul George trade? I would start with Rudy Gay, but we're still four and a half million off, but we can get there. I would give you Ben McElmore. I'd give you Jakob Pertl. All right, we could actually get this deal done. Do I have that future Bulls pick? Yes. And I have a future Grizzlies pick. So three players and two draft picks for Paul George. They say no. The only thing I'd be willing to throw in is like, uh, Kent Bazemore. That doesn't get it done. I doubt they prefer... I mean, I would give you J.R. Smith if that got this deal done. Okay, it doesn't. Damn, I really wanted him. We could go after Melo, but he's 32 years old. I mean, I'd love Kawhi, but he's going to also be very tough to get. Going to offer a very similar package for Kawhi. They say no. And then what about if I give you my first round pick? They say no. All right, so I was like thinking about Jimmy Butler. Do I want to go after him? Giannis may be too tough to try to trade for. Like if I gave you Ben McElmore, if I gave you basically every guy we just drafted. So if I gave you Caruso, Pirtle, Finney, Smith, and McElmore for Giannis, they say no. What about if I give you a first rounder? They say no. Oh, man, these trades are tough to pull off. All right, so maybe I'm not going to make a trade right now. Maybe that's going to be something that's going to happen around the deadline. Ooh, let's give Chandler Parsons a three-year deal. He could also be another good trade piece. So we're going to have to let Josh Smith, Ish Smith, Reggie Williams, and Zaza all walk. But if we take a look, um, LeBron goes to the Nets. KD goes to the Bucks. Andre Drummond last year uh, averaged 13 points and 12 rebounds. I'm just going to get Tyler Zeller, UNC legend right there. So we got Cousins and Kevin Love regressing, Rudy Gay regressing. I feel like I got to move Rudy Gay, but like I said, that may happen at the deadline. It is tougher to make deadline deals though, because then you have the roster restrictions as well. All right, so it's going to be D'Lo, J.R. Smith, Rudy Gay, Kevin Love, Demarcus Cousins with Collison, Parsons, McCollum, Macklemore, and Ashik off the bench. Like I said, we have a ton of depth. There could be a trade in place at the deadline. Hopefully we have a good season ahead of us. And what are in the first week, Ben McElmore breaks his right leg. Oh my God, are you kidding me? The day before the deadline, Rudy Gay breaks his left leg. He's out six to eight weeks. You gotta be kidding me. So now I can't move Rudy Gay here at the deadline. That is just brutal. Oh my God. All right, well, at least he's under contract in the off season which I will be moving him most likely then, but this is just brutal to see unfold because we could have made like a championship caliber move. We're going to re-sign DeMarcus Cousins. He was a free agent at the end of next year, but we're just going to get that deal done. Darren Collison, a free agent at the end of the year. Let's load him up to be our backup point guard still. So I don't think I'm going to make any trades here at the deadline. I think we're going to pretty much just stand pat. We're 31 and 21. Hopefully we just get healthy for the playoffs and hopefully we avoid Golden State in round one. Just kind of an update here on the scoring this season with Love and Cousins, both averaging double-doubles, but d has has been the leading scorer 7.7 assists just think about how good he's going to be next year as well and shout out to cj mccullum playing well for us all right we kept the team the same and we ended up going 53 in 29 so in year one the 2015 season we weren't great last year we were a lot better but we were a first round exit this year we just won 50 games with this team and hopefully we can get our first playoff series victory in demarcus cousins career who was all nba first team once again here is all nba second team and third team, you got Paul George, Melo, Clay. I tried trading for basically all of those guys at one point last offseason. And we are the five seed taking on the four seeded Suns, who have Eric Bledsoe, Goran Dragic, PJ Tucker, Markeith Morris. They signed Marcus Saul. They have Isaiah Thomas off the bench. And here were the player stats from this season. Kevin Love still gave me 15 and 12 and a half and shot good from three, 2.1 assists tonight as well. Devo with 17 points, two and a half rebounds, and seven assists and shot 37% from three. I'm very excited about this team in the playoffs. Game number one against the Suns. We we end up winning by 13 points. That's what I'm talking about. Cousins with 25 and 10. Game number two goes to the Kings. We end up winning by 23 points. We are now two games away from winning our first playoff series. And 
DeMarcus Cousins goes down with an injury. You gotta be kidding me. We lose our best player for the next four to six weeks. All right, game number three. We win with no Cousins. I'll take it. We won by five. So we're gonna see more Omar Ashi. We're gonna see more Tyler Zeller. We're gonna see probably more Kevin Love at the five. All right, game four. Can we not blow a 3 0 lead? We sweep them. We won the two games without Cousins. We'll take that, Jared, with 21. But we gotta take on the Golden State Warriors, who are just gonna sweep us. Unless they're missing Steph Curry. And oh my god, they are. All right, maybe we do have a chance. I would have felt a lot better if we had DeMarcus Cousins, obviously, because he's still out 46 weeks. Man, he's basically out for the playoffs. We won game one by four. Okay, <laughs> McCollum with 20, D'Lo with 28, Love with a double-double, three for 12 for Collison, ew. Game number two is gonna go to the Kings. We are 6-0 in the playoffs. We beat him by six, and Steph was back. We beat Steph. All right, it's the depth of this team. Game number three, oh my God, we're up 3-0. We won by 16, D'Lo with 30. Let's go, 21 from McCollum. The dude is kind of breaking out for us in the playoffs. JR has been exceptional as well. Can we sweep them? We just did. We are 8-0. Oh my God, we beat them by one at home. Kevin Love and D'Lo combined for 51. Curry had a 37-point triple-double with five steals, but an L is an L. We're taking on the Utah Jazz in the conference finals. Could we win it all this year? Do I even need to make a move? All right, so we're taking on the Utah Jazz, man. I feel like... I feel like we could beat this team. Like, no way they are better than the Warriors. Uh, you got Philly and Milwaukee on the other side. We win game one. We are currently 9-0 in the playoffs. I feel like that's a storyline I got to mention as well. Beat them by 24 points here. All right. Game number two goes to the Sacramento Kings. We win by two. What is going on? We are 10-0. DeMarcus Cousins is like, I'm not even going to see a playoff L again. Even though he has been hurt for these games. But I can't, yeah, like I'm forgetting we're doing this all without DeMarcus Cousins. We actually may get him back for the finals. It's been like everybody clowned the Heat last year in round one when like they were saying Hero's not going to be back to the finals if the Heat make it. And everyone's like, well, he's out for the playoffs. Well, no, the Heat made it. And we should be getting DeMarcus Cousins back for the finals if we're able to not blow a 3-0 lead. And we just swept them. We just beat them by 16. We held them to eight points in the second quarter. Shout out to the Rick Carlisle defense. And are we taking on Philly? Yes, we are. So they have Michael Carter Williams, Devin Booker, Chris Middleton, Amir Johnson, Joel Embiid with New Orleans Noel, Brandon Wright, JJ Barea, Matthew Deladova, and Omri Caspi off the bench. So DeMarcus Cousins, I'm hoping is back by like game three, but I don't know. He's not even day to day yet. So I, I'm a little nervous. Oh, I'm nervous. We just lost our first playoff game in the finals. All right, we just lost our first playoff game by 14 on the road. Please don't go down 2-0. Yes. All right. Huge win by 18. We split them in Philly. That is massive. Love with 28. Cousins is now day to day. Can we get him back for game four? I hope so. We drop game three by 17. It's a must win game four. Must win. And we win. Let's go. We win by 14. Please tell me we're getting Cousins back. Come on, Cousins. I need you. Tyler Zauer is fully healthy. Oh, that gave me blue balls. Oh, no. There we go. DeMarcus Cousins is back for game five. Here we go. Game five on the road in Philly. We haven't been great. And oh, my God. Cousins is back. And we're down by 20 points. Unless we have a huge second half comeback, we're going to get blown out. All right. It's been a back and forth series. So they are going to win game number five. They're up three to two. Please win game six. Force the game seven. Oh, they're off to a great start. They really are. Oh my God. This is going to be a close one. I can't stress this. They're, they're up by seven and they're up three games to two. We're down by seven. Come on, down by seven, down by 13. And unfortunately, we lost the 2017 NBA Finals and MCW is your finals MVP. All right, I'm not stopping until I get DeMarcus Cousins a ring. It's funny because like we were fully healthy for the uh, finals. Are we better without DeMarcus Cousins? Would that be a storyline from this? Kobe and Dirk head to the Hall of Fame. Draft lottery time. We end up with pick 25 from Chicago and our pick at 26. All right, I'm going to make this trade with the Philadelphia 76ers. Yes, the team that beat us. Hopefully, this makes them a little bit worse. So I'm giving up one of our first round picks, Rudy Gay, Alex Caruso, and Dorian Finney-Smith. For Malik Beasley, he's probably on par with Caruso or Finney-Smith. But we're getting Chris Middleton in this deal, who's five years younger than Rudy Gay and a lot more efficient. We ended up with Darren Moody there at 25. Cecil Warwick, I'll sign. Why not? Jason Tatum was the number one overall pick to the Cavs. Lowry to the Mavericks. Donovan Mitchell to the Clippers. Let's sign Russell, Jair, and Ashik. Um, I signed a pretty good rated like draft class, but there's a 40-year-old Mitch Hansen, so I'm sorry, OKC. Giannis is an unrestricted free agent, probably going to get paid a boatload of money. Let's bring back CJ McCollum and Ben McElmore, and boom, there we go. We also got to keep Jakob Pertl as well, which is nice because he is going to be our 
maybe back up center next year. I think I'm going to start CJ McCollum at the two as well. All right, Devo's up to an 84. There's Middleton. There's Collison. Could this team do it in year number four? Let's hope so. All right, so it's going to be Russell McCollum, Middleton, Love Cousins with Collison, Parsons, who I'm going to kind of just swap their minutes off the bench with um, Jarr Smith and Jakob Pertl. Let's hope that this team can win a championship this year because I can't believe we didn't win it last year. That was brutal. Oh my God. Chris Middleton dislocates his left patella. Hopefully he's back for the playoffs. Come on. The injuries have just been killing me in this video. All right. So we are 34 and 17 here at the deadline. We will get Middleton back before the year ends, but he was not playing that well before that injury went down. Looking here at the stats, D'Lo has really turned into our best score, followed by Cousins. Love. There's CJ McCollum who's shooting 40% from three. I give up. The Kings are cursed. The Kings are just absolutely cursed. Kevin Love, torn left patellar tendon. He's out for the year. I've never had more major injuries in a rebuild. I feel like just every year somebody's getting a major injury when it matters. Who knows? Maybe he will be back. Like McCollum just came back after like a six week absence. I mean, we are 27 games above 500, but how am I going to be confident in the NBA finals when we just lost our third best player? Steph Curry does win MVP this year. Lonzo Ball, rookie of the year on the Memphis Grizzlies. He was the 12th overall pick. Horrible efficiency. Vooch, six man of the year. LeBron, Depoy, Winslow, most improved, and Carvalho is your coach of the year. So we got coach of the year, but we were the four seed in the Western Conference. 56 and 26. Okay, we actually had the second best record, but we are in the same division as the Warriors and what it used to be. If you were a division winner, you automatically got a top three spot. So that was the case. We are going to be without Kevin Love for the whole playoffs, unfortunately. So we're going to see some Chandler Parsons at the four. We're taking on Kawhi Leonard, Rudy Gobert, Tony Parker, Tim Hardaway Jr. in round one. If we're going to lose, we're going to lose. Just put me out of my misery quickly. I don't want to sit here and simulate every game just to end up losing in seven. So just simulate the round. Two to two, three to two us. Boom. We win in six. So basically for the third year in a row, we're taking on the Golden State Warriors here in the playoffs. They do have Steph. Uh, their team is still pretty much centered around the Splash Bros. Can we beat them and go to the conference finals? No, we're down 2-0, oh, 3-0. Oh. oh, the Kings are cursed, man. All right, well, I gave this a shot. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pull it off. The Warriors ended up just going, wow, Steph, you're insane. They ended up going 16-3 and in the playoffs. I don't know how we swept them last year. That was just insane. But yeah, 2017 was our year to do it. I hope you guys did enjoy this Sacramento Kings historic rebuild. Let me know if you did by dropping a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments which historic rebuild or team I should use next. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace.